Durban, Africa's playground and home to one of the best beach breaks in the world, New Pier. Venue for this year's Lizard Nando's Surf Pro. An 80,000 Rand one star WQS event. Total of 82 men, 20 women and 32 juniors converged on Nupia for this event, the second on the ASP Africa series. Beach break at New Pier is unique and local surfer Simon Nicholson knows it better than anyone. Yeah, New Pier is definitely a, a, a phenomenal wave. It's um, due to the way the piers are set up and because it's the first pier that collects the sand that's pumped out from South Beach, you tend to get a really good running sandbank running from, uh, from right to left. It's an amazing, amazing barrel when it's on, when the offshore's blowing and that sort of thing. It, it can be like one of the best beach breaks in the world. Uh, today the conditions are there for it to be like that, um, barring one factor which is the wind and uh, I think uh, you know if the wind had to switch later on today we could be in for some of the best finals ever. A great vibe on the beach for the start of day one of the competition, the Lizard Nando's Pro, but conditions on the first day turned out to be pretty testing for the field that went out for the early rounds. Conditions were tough, the senior men surfed the first two rounds through to round 12 to try and sort out who was going to make it through to the quarterfinals. The weather was clear, but six to eight foot of really heavy surf made for some demanding conditions for even the most experienced of the riders. When the juniors got into the water, the one young man that really caught everybody's attention was bluff hottie Rudy Palmboom, who really was a standout star in the early heats in tricky surf conditions. Another one of the youngsters to catch the eye in the early heats was young Chad Dutoy, one of the youngest groms in the field and a man with a future at his feet. But making waves early on, the incredible talent of Roseanne Hodge, a 17-year-old from East London who had entered the girls' competition but to sharpen up her skills had decided to try and surf her way through the boys' heats as well. Did brilliantly in the first round, made her way through to the second round and then luck conspired against her and she came unstuck. A fine effort from young Roseanne, earning her plenty of cred with the rest of the surfing community. Day three, finals day. And Durban surfing legend Paul Canning is one surfer with a soft spot for New Pier. You know, being a Lizard event and me being sponsored by Lizard, I was really looking forward to this event. You know, I was hoping for a really good result. And, uh, you know, coming, in, coming up towards the event, the conditions were looking like it was going to be epic. Had a cyclone off Mauritius and then it looked like there was going to be westerly winds for the weekend. And Unfortunately, the winds just haven't sort of cooperated, so it's made for really, really hard conditions. And um, you know, there's a, it's hard to choose them. There's a lot of closeouts. It's a really good wave. I mean, I, when it's good, it's it's world class. It breaks on a on a shallow sand bank in front of the pier, and uh, it's been really good for the last three months. We've had a really good bank, and uh, you know, when it when it does turn on, you can get long barrels and uh, get in some nice critical maneuvers. Well, I'm back on the QS this year. Um, you know, my my main goal is to get back into the WCT. I feel I can, you know, I've been training really hard and uh, surfing a lot and I feel my surfing's, you know, up there. Pretty much going to do all the five and six stars this year. It consists of about 20 events um, yeah, all around the world. We've got one in Maldives, a few in Brazil, a few in Hawaii, a couple in America and uh, so I'm going to do all the, all the main ones. Well, I think it's going to get easier as the day goes on, you know, I think the tide's going to start coming in and um, it, won't be, it won't be closing out as much so it'll be a bit easier to handle. You know, there's a lot of really good junior guys coming up, you know, Dan Redman and uh, Brandon Jackson and, you know, there's a, everyone's ripping, so, you know, I think it's going to be two really good semi-finals and uh, final is going to be awesome, you know, I think the guys are really going to be pushing the limits and 
hopefully there'll be a couple barrels that stay open and we'll see some good surfing. Semi-final time and into the water first with the junior boys with the surf still running big and gnarly. In the water from East London, Jonathan Bruton, Dave Richards all the way from Cape Town and Rudy Palmboom and Brandon Jackson, two local Durban surfers contesting what turned out to be big and lumpy surf. Jonathan Bruton with a cutback, keeping it all together and staying on the board, accumulating some desperately needed points. Everybody looking for point scoring waves. Remember two point scoring waves counting at this stage in the competition and the surf punishing the slightest mistake. Rudy Pombuer from the bluff looking good, cutting his way back in. And into the second semi-final, where local boy Josh Schmelzer turned out to be one of the star attractions on the day. He was in the water along with bluff surfer Ricky Basnett, Chad Dutoy, one of the youngsters in the field, and Durban surfer Chris Schnitzer. Ricky Basnett trying to milk some points out of that, a big floater, and he's milking more and more out of this wave, takes it on into the mid-break, looking for his spot in the final. Also in the hunt for a place in the finals, Josh Schmelzer. I was, I was just trying to get like, uh, you know, not, not a lot of waves in the heat, but uh, just pick the best waves. And uh, it was working for me sometimes and other times it wasn't. And then, I don't know, this morning I was probably my best heat and uh, I don't know, just trying to get a lot of barrels. And then I just try to pick it up from there. And uh, I think I've been getting more consistent going through the events and now hopefully in the final I can pull it off. But uh, geez, the waves getting really, really hard and, and a lot bigger. I can check a capping on the mound out there, so look. It's getting bigger, but uh, I know in the final, may the best person win and uh, hope the guys get a little bit better. So into the junior boys final. Conditions still pretty tough, the weather clear and the crowd looking forward to a really great afternoon of finals. Into the finals of the junior boys. Josh Meltzer, we heard a few moments ago, he was comfortably through along with Ricky Basnett from their semi-final. From the other semi, Dave Richards and Rudy Palmboom. First up and running, Ricky Basnett from the bluff looking to try and get an early advantage by putting some big points on the board. Taking off at the back, David Richards from Cape Town, he gets wiped out. A lot of the surf at this stage are gamble, taking off on a wave with no idea what it's going to produce. In the blue, Josh Schmelzer taking off on a wave, manages to find some water to work with and cuts back nicely to pick up some points as he tries to accumulate some points early on in this boys' final. On the outside, Rudy Palmboom, youngster from the bluff who really has been one of the stars of the competition so far and you can see why. Shreds the beginning and then gets wiped out. Hard work, eh? Once again, Dave Richards from Cape Town taking off, and this time he gets augured into the big surf. Josh Schmelzer in the hunt once again, looking for points on his second wave to go with the four points he got from his first wave. Not looking pretty for him. Two and a half to go with his four, 6.5. Ricky Basnett taking off for his second wave. He got five points for his first dead on the first wave, and this is looking good. The judges are going to find plenty to score here. Looking very strong indeed as he cuts back in. He's staying out of the trouble with the rough water. Good board speed across the front of it. This is a 6.5 to go with the 5 he scored earlier. A total of 11.5 in the final. And a lead that proved to be unassailable. And after shredding his way through the semis, Rudy Palmboom battling in the final, walking away with a final total of 2.9. Capetonian Dave Richards trying to add some late points as he looks for his second scoring wave to try and put himself back into contention. 3.5 to go with his earlier 1.85. Final tally for 5,35 and that's a third for the man from the Cape. Junior champ Ricky Basley. That's kind of, yeah, I've been a heavy mission all day and um, pretty tired now. <laughs> like a lot of work, a lot of paddling and everything but got into a few waves here and got some scores so I'm stuck. Into the women's semi-finals now, and in semi number one, Sarah Johnson from Durban up against Stacey Guy, Michelle Hill from Cape St. Francis, and ripping this one, Tasha Mentasti. <music> semi-finals number two saw Tamaris Demarusum up against Bronwyn Coote, Penny Robots, and ripping this wave from East London, Roseanne Hodge. 
Roseanne making it look easy, but most of the women found it really difficult to get a wave which they could pick up any points on. Conditions in the water were really tough for the women. The surf was big, it was gnarly, and at times they battled to get the point scoring waves they needed to get through to the final. But the final four, Sarah Johnson up against Michelle Hill, Roseanne Hodge, and Penny Roberts. Penny Roberts taking off on this wave early on in the final. Remember all the girls are aware that conditions are going to be tough and those point scoring waves are going to be few and far between. Penny milking this one all the way down to the shore break. This one netting her 3.5 for her efforts. Taking off on this one in the red is Sarah Johnson, but she kicks out. There's nothing to work with there. Roseanne Hodge takes off on her second wave. The 17-year-old looking very confident in the tricky surf conditions. Putting together a series of maneuvers that netted 6,25 and valuable points in the final. And that gives her the early lead in the showdown. This is Cape St. Francis local Michelle Hill taking off on what turned out to be her only scoring wave of the ladies' final, 2,75 and 4th place. Sarah Johnson looking to try and hunt down the early lead that all the girls know Roseanne Hodge has got. She takes off on a big wave, huge wave crashing in behind her. She's got all the board speed and she wipes it. Roseanne Hodge trying to capitalise on her early lead, but this wave doesn't give her a great deal to work with and she blows out the back. Penny Roberts heading out back into the action and she takes off on this one to try and add some points and open her account and pose a challenge for the women's title. And despite battling in the big surf, Sarah Johnson put together two scores to total 6.5 and tidy up second place for her overall. Penny Roberts finished up with a third, she finished up with 5.25. And finally taking a stranglehold on the ladies title, the highest scoring wave of the final to give her a total of 13.25, the awesome talent of Roseanne Hodge. It actually started off with me jumping off the pier and getting really, really nailed and held down by a wave. And I was pretty shaken after that, but I managed to just relax and take it easy. I got my first wave early and then I ran around and managed to get another one. So yeah, I'm really, really happy. Yeah, I think um, this contest, the conditions and everything, it was really about fitness as well. I mean, it played a, a, big, a big role in how your heat went because you had to run around, jump off the pier, paddle. I mean, there was like a river current washing across to North Beach, so it was really tough. Yeah, I'm just so happy. I mean, it's my first contest that I've served in South Africa this year, so I'm really just so stoked. And I mean, there's so many girls that were ripping, so yeah, I'm really, really happy. And uh, with five minutes remaining, all three, four of the surfers having had a wave. So this could certainly change the situation around. And finally down to the big decider, the men's final just minutes away. Local hottie Antonio Bortoleta knows all about the new pier break. Um, I surf here at New Pier. I've been surfing here for years. I live just, just up the road and pretty much run down here just about every day and get out here and surf. It's great to have a contest here at my, at my home break. I wake up and you know, I know I'm going to surf you know, the same spot that I surf every day. So it's, it's really cool to have a contest here. The waves have been good over the last few days and when I'm free surfing, uh, not in the contest, when I'm just out there, um, I get really good waves and I have a really good time so I'm just trying to put that into the event. There's some big swell, there's some one or two big waves out there, it's, it's been good. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it and I think when, it, when it's clean, when the waves are clean, it's gonna get really, really good. It's just a bit of a rip. The key to the waves here is to get a wave that, that's clean because when the swell picks up, there's a lot of turbulence and sometimes a rip runs through. And you don't wanna get the wave that's got all froth and foam from, from the wave before and there's too much water turbulating. You want to get the, the clean one. So you look down the line and you look for the wall that's going to end up being clean because a lot of them come down and they kind of might just get a bit bumpy and not really what you're looking for. There's like two, probably two or three sections. 
first section is like near the pier. Sometimes that you can't surf there because it's it's too fast and you go into the second section. The second section can get really, really hollow. Sometimes you can sit a bit wider off the pier and get really nice wide waves. Then when it does turn on, you can get barreled all the way, you can get into the tube all the way down the line. And it's, it's good like that, you know? And everybody packed onto the beach was hoping that New Pier would produce what they all know it can be, one of the best beach breaks in the world. Men's semi number one, Daniel Redman, Brandon Jackson, Gavin Roberts, and Shane Thorne. In the red, Daniel Redman. Taking off in the white, Brandon Jackson. In the blue singlet for the semi-final, Gavin Roberts getting wiped out. And in yellow, Shane Thorne. Right near the end of the semi, and Daniel Redmond takes off on a classic wave, bursts out of the barrel, big points for him, probably the best wave of the semi, if not the best wave of the event. Into the final he goes, along with Brandon Jackson. The second semi-final saw Manfred Adrio, winner of the Zigzag Blowing Up Award, squaring up against Matthew Kruger, Quinton Jones, and Frankie Oberholzer. Matthew Kruger ripping his way through the semi with an awesome barrel. Quinton Jones, former national champ from Cape Town, slicing his way onto the point scorers. And one of the legends, Frankie Oberholzer, showing what he's made of. So the last two into the final, Matthew Kruger, who's 9.5 for that awesome barrel, saw him into the decider with Frankie Oberholzer. Into the men's final of the Lizard Nando's Surf Pro, 15,000 Rand waiting for the winner of this one star WQS event. 25 minutes to decide who's going to take home the big bucks. Frankie Oberholzer running out along New Pier ahead of the final, getting himself into the water bright and early. Matthew Kruger following him. First up in the final, Daniel Redman. Non scoring ride for him, and he has to hit the beach, run across the beach, run out across the pier, and get back into the line. New Pier local Brandon Jackson takes off. Significant that three of the four finalists are localists here at New Pier. Frankie Oberholzer, the legend, takes off. Shows the sort of style that's taken him all around the world. This was one of only two point scoring waves for Frankie in the final, but it was 4.25 in the bag and pushed him into the lead. Matthew Kruger drops in to open his account. He's in the chase for that 4.25 set by Frankie Oberholzer as the early pace setter in the final. The judge is giving him 4.25. Joint leaders at this stage. Brandon Jackson takes off to try and get his first points on the board. Bails out the back, but it's just 2.75. While Matthew Kruger hits the beach for the long run, back out along the beach, out along the pier, and into the liner. Daniel Redman takes off for his first scoring wave, and it turns out to be a monster. 17 minutes left in the final, and this awesome beauty produces an eight-pointer. It would prove to be the defining moment in the decider, and hard to believe that it was this young man's first senior pro final. The other three knew that they were playing catch-up now. Matthew Kruger takes off to try and close down some of the deficit.
Brandon Jackson takes off to try and hunt down Daniel Redmond. Daniel Redman has got a sniff of the lead and he's trying to capitalize on it with this reply. Wave consistency turned out to be a real problem in the final, but Jackson showed his class here. 5.5 and that cemented second place for him. Seven minutes to go. Leader at this stage, Daniel Redmond takes off on a rear left-hander, trying to add to his cumulative score. The red flag, five minutes to go in this men's final, and Frankie Oberholzer has one last roll of the dice, but it doesn't pan out for him. He finishes up with a 5.55. In the yellow, last gasp now for Matthew Kruger. He takes off on his last scoring wave, bags a 4.25 for this. He finishes up with a final total of 10.0. Daniel Redman has one last chance to capitalize on that awesome wave. This is his last scoring ride, and he's going to milk every last point he can get out of it. It's a 6.75 to go from his 8 from earlier, 14.75. And as Brandon Jackson takes off on the last wave right on the final hooter, he knows that it'll take a combination of scores to try and top that. So Daniel Redman wraps up his maiden senior title. 14.75, well clear in the final, made up of that awesome eight-pointer and a 6.75 from his second point scoring wave. And as he paddled in at the end of the final, he didn't know for sure that he had it until his mates on the beach confirmed the good news. Yeah, this guy. There's no other way I would have liked to have won it. Like, there's only one turn on the end there, but so I was struggling in the beginning. I thought, oh, after 10 minutes, I was nowhere. And then um, she said one came through, I got an eight, so a little bit of a chance. It was a <laughs> super good starter. Probably I could have, she said I can't believe it. I, was, can, <laughs> I don't know, I'm pretty lost for words right now. It's <laughs> pretty fresh on my mind right now. Stoked though. <laughs> Prize giving time at the end of the competition, starting off with the ladies and her first senior pro title for the awesome talent of Roseanne Hodge. The prize is being handed over by KwaZulu Natal's MEC for Sport and Recreation, Ami Chandraj Bunzi. On to the pro junior men, and the hefty winner's check goes to Ricky Bassnet. The Lizard Trophy, one of the most distinctive surfing awards goes to Daniel Redman, the 2005 champ. His first senior men's title and valuable WQS points to boot. So to look back on three days of really awesome surfing at a truly special beach break. The men's final going the way of Daniel Redman thanks to one truly mercurial moment. In the junior pros, Ricky Bassnett getting the better of Josh Schmelzer and Dave Richards. And one of the rising stars of women's surfing making her mark in the women's final, Roseanne Hodge meets London, putting it past Sarah Johnson, Penny Roberts and Michelle Hill. And that brings down the curtain on a really special event. This has been a presentation of the Lizard Nando Surf Pro from New Pier in Durban. Be sure to join us for the next event on the ASP Africa series from the south coast of KwaZulu-Natal.